Hello, sunshine. It's Steph, and welcome back to my YouTube channel, where every week I share with you tips on how to get fit and get paid freelancing. Today's episode is a get fit episode, and we're talking about all about pull-ups. So if you're someone who has never been able to do a pull-up and you want to learn how to get your very first pull-up, then keep watching. I'm going to share with you absolutely everything that you need to do to prepare your body and mind to be able to do a pull-up and feel strong and empowered at the gym from now on. So keep watching for those tips. Now, real quick, if you haven't yet watched the last Get Fit episode, go check it out here. I'm sure that you're going to love that one as well. Also, give a little tap on that subscribe button below to make sure that you stay up to date on when new episodes are released every week. Yes, every week, new episodes for you guys because I just love teaching you all how to feel strong and also how to feel empowered enough to make money online doing something that you love. All right, so today's topic of pull-ups, how to get your first pull-up. I'm not only gonna share with you the best mobility and strength exercises to build up the ability to do pull-ups, I'm also gifting you with a free workout, the exact workout that I used to do before I was able to do my very first pull-up years ago, and how you can progress with those pull-ups over time so you can continue to get stronger and strong with them over time. So stay tuned till the very end for that completely free pull-up workout, all right? Today's video is all about my favorite empowering exercise, the pull-up. As a smaller woman, I was not always able to do a pull-up. Even as a child or when I was in gymnastics and stuff, I couldn't do pull-ups. I wasn't able to do a pull-up until I got into strength training later in life and was very strategic about how I built up to being able to do that first chin-up. Okay, so a chin-up is different from a pull-up, yes. Let's go ahead and talk about the difference between chin-ups and pull-ups now so it's very clear to you. But just so you know, most people will start with chin-ups first and eventually progress to pull-ups. So a chin-up is when you are holding the bar with the palms facing you in what we call an underhand grip. And because you're in this supinated grip with the hands, it's going to target the biceps. So of course, it's still working the back and the chest a little bit. Yes, pull-ups work the chest. But it's also really allowing those biceps to help out to curl you up to the bar. So for that reason, chin-ups tend to be a little bit easier for people to achieve first. So if you are a woman who's never been able to do a pull-up, Maybe try that chin up grip with the palms facing you first. That may be a little bit easier to ease into because the biceps can really help you out. Then, when you're ready, you can progress to a pull-up. A pull-up is where you have an overhand grip. The palms are facing away from you. It could be narrow or it could be a little bit wider, up to you, but that's what a pull-up is. It's when your palms are facing away, so it's really targeting more about driving those elbows down and back and fully targeting those lats mostly. Now, of course, there are also other variations of grips that you could use. For example, you could use a mixed grip. So one is pronated, one is supinated. Or you could do a neutral grip where the palms are facing in toward each other. It's really up to you. I've also seen people use towels to grip onto, fancy little grip things that are smaller or larger to really challenge their grip in different ways. But overall, the two main types are gonna be the chin up and the pull up. So like I said, if you are new, you've never been able to do one, start with chin ups first, and then over time, you may feel stronger, more confident, and you can progress to pull ups and eventually those wider pull ups and different grip variations from there. So why are pull-ups even a good exercise to do in the first place? Well, you know, Forrester loves them, you guys. Where'd you go, buddy? Hi! Forrester loves pull-ups, just kidding. <laughs> he loves watching mommy do pull-ups, but pull-ups are fantastic for building your back. They're also a great compound exercise, meaning they work more than one muscle group at a time. So not only are you building up your back, but you're working your arms, you're working the chest a little bit, you're really working your core to be able to stabilize and keep the spine neutral and use control. So they're a compound exercise. You get more than two for one, more than three for one, you get like a lot of muscles hit at once. In addition to just the strength component of pull-ups, pull-ups are also great for your aesthetic physique, right? How you look. When you build up your back and those lat muscles, you get a wider looking back. We call it like a V taper. It's going to taper in and make your waist appear 
thinner or smaller. So ladies, if you have been afraid of doing pull-ups because you don't want your back to be too big, come on now. We all know that is a myth. You're not going to just bulk up because you started doing pull-ups. So start the pull-ups because most likely you will notice some great changes I love you, in your body. And besides just getting stronger and also having the appearance of a smaller waist, from a physical therapist perspective, having a really strong back is also helpful for things like maintaining a good posture, maintaining good scapular stability, good spine stability, and overall just having much more body awareness of how you hold your body throughout the day. So there are many reasons to do pull-ups, all right? So if you weren't convinced, hopefully you are now. Now here's the thing with pull-ups. A lot of people do them wrong, incorrectly, poor form. There are a lot of common mistakes with pull-ups, so I want to address those now so that you're aware of them now before you even get more practiced with pull-ups, all right? Even if you're able to do one pull-up, two pull-ups, three pull-ups, four pull-ups, if you're still in that beginning, beginner phase, you still may be making some of these mistakes. So I think it's important that you become aware of them so you can try to avoid them and do your best to have as best form as possible. And remember, you can progress with your pull-ups by doing more than just adding more reps on or more volume, which is sets and reps on or more duration. You can progress pull-ups by using better form. So what is good form going to look like? Well, here are some common pull-up mistakes, all right? Number one, elevating the shoulders, not engaging the lats to keep them down, instead elevating and using those upper traps a lot. Number two, using momentum, swinging the body. Now, I know in CrossFit, that's a specific exercise they do, so if that's the case, fine. But if you're just doing a traditional pull-up or chin-up, you shouldn't be swinging the legs, swinging the body like crazy, using momentum to get up there. That's cheating. Number three, not keeping the spine neutral and actually hyperextending the spine, arching the lower back a lot so you're losing full control. And number four, not using large enough range of motion, cheating yourself, going up to only here, not getting your chin up above the bar. That's why it's called a pull-up or a chin up. You want it to clear the bar. So when people are just half-assing it and just going like partial range of motion but knocking out 20, I'm like, come on. You gotta use full range of motion. So go all the way up to the chin is above the bar and go all the way down until the arms are completely straight again. I see guys all the time at the gym, they just go from here to here thinking that they're doing pull-ups. I'm like, oh my god, I can do that. I can do 50 of those. That's easy. You need to use a full range of motion, good form, with any exercise for it to be most effective. So those are the most common pull-up and chin-up mistakes. So to make it very clear, correct pull-up and chin-up form is when you have really good scapular stability. You're able to keep those shoulders down and back. You're able to keep the core engaged so that the lower back is neutral and not arching like that. You're able to do them while keeping the body fairly still and not swinging a lot. And you're able to use a completely full range of motion. All right, you guys know that I'm the queen of mobility exercise. So I'm not gonna give you a pull-up program here and not include mobility. Mobility is important in order to be able to do a pull-up with full range of motion and correct form. You've got to have the ability to have the arms up overhead while maintaining a neutral spine, while keeping that core engaged and a very slight posterior pelvic tilt. You've got to have mobility through the shoulders, stability through the spine, and stability through the core region. And so how can you work on that? By taking a step back, doing some mobility exercise, doing some very light strengthening exercises to help you build up to your first pull-up. So today I wanna to share with you five mobility exercises that would be the perfect warm-up to do before any pull-up day, any upper body pull day, these would be great to do. So here they are. I'll give you the name and the recommended reps below so you can follow along and come back to this, screenshot it, whatever you need to do to practice these before you begin any strength training session. For these exercises, you're gonna need a stick, a dowel rod, a golf club, a pool stick, um, a broom, whatever you can find that's similar. And the first exercise, you're going to hold it with an overhand grip, and then you're gonna bring that stick up overhead, nice and slow with control, back behind you, 
toward the glutes and then slowly bring it back around all while keeping the arms straight. So the wider the grip, the easier it will be. Start off pretty wide and with each rep, if you can scoot the hands a little closer, do so. And with this exercise, you're not just swinging the arms quickly, right? I want you to take it slow with control and I want you to focus on keeping good form. Shoulders down and back, core engaged, abs pulling in toward the spine, all right? Just like that, nice and slow with control. Another great way to warm up the lats and go into some full shoulder flexion is with a child's pose. And I love to do it using the stick. You could also have your hands on a countertop or a chair, whatever you have. And you're gonna have both hands on top and then step back, hinge at the torso and lean into it here. And then press down into the stick as you stand back up slightly. Repeat, getting a nice great stretch in those shoulders, in those lats, and come back up. So for this one, we're working on that overhead range of motion and you're gonna feel a really great stretch through here. We're not just holding the stretch statically, staying still for 30 seconds to a minute. Sorry about that. Um, but the mobility exercise is moving through that range of motion, using more of your own control and stability to work through that range. Now, when you're going into that pull-up or that chin-up, you're going into some shoulder extension here. You're drawing the elbows down and back. And if you don't have that range of motion to be able to bring the elbows back behind you slightly, you're not going to be able to properly engage the lats and some of those scapular muscles. So, I like to do a warm-up for shoulder extension. Holding the stick behind you with the palms facing forward, and then pull the stick back behind you for a second, and relax. Reaching back without rounding the shoulders, right? We're keeping good form. Pulling the belly button to the spine, pulling the shoulders back, and then just working that shoulder joint here to be able to reach the elbow slightly back behind us. All right, we're done with the stick for now. The fourth exercise is a standing QL stretch. I really like to stretch out the lower back, um, especially if we're doing any sort of vertical pull exercise. A lot of people's lower backs start to spasm, tighten up. Um, so it's really important that we warm up the lower back too. So with a good QL stretch and standing, you can bring one leg behind you. So I'm bringing the right leg slightly behind, right arm overhead, and I'm gonna bend to the side and then come back up. Bend to the side and come back up. If I'm at the gym, I will grab onto a squat rack or something here that's sturdy to even deepen the stretch more. But this is fine for now. And then you'd repeat on the other side. Left leg behind, left arm overhead, bend to the right. This is stretching the left QL. It's a deep muscle in the lower back that often spasms, especially if you start to do pull-ups with bad form and you're doing a lot of twisting, a lot of momentum swinging. I just don't want that QL to spasm up on you. So it's great to warm it up. Now our final and fifth mobility exercise to warm up for pull-up day is against a wall. So find a wall at home or at the gym. Stand against the wall with a slight bend in the knees, hip distance apart, and then bring those arms back on the wall. Now, I want you to pretend like you're doing snow angels against the wall. Keep the arms glued to the wall. Bring them up overhead as far as you can. If they start to lift off the wall, you've gone too far. And then slide the arms back down. Like you're making angels in the snow. This is really forcing you to not round, right? So many of us start to round, but when you're doing pull-ups, you don't want to be doing your pull-ups like this. You want to be doing your pull-ups with good form, being able to keep the arms back, having a very vertical pull with the pull-ups, okay? So this exercise is really, really great for getting more range in the shoulders and also stability through the scapula, which are the shoulder blades. All right, so those are the five mobility warm-up exercises I highly suggest you do before every pull-up practice day. All right, now that you're warmed up, I wanna give you guys a list of the best strengthening exercises to help you build up to your first pull-up. This is going to be a list of my favorite pull-up preparation exercises I specifically put together for you to do your first pull-up. If you can already do pull-ups, then you may be able to skip some of these easier ones, but everyone can benefit from doing all of these exercises no matter what. 
Now the thought process or the reasoning behind me choosing these exercises is for a few reasons. Number one, I wanted to choose exercises that would allow you to work on building up that core strength or that posterior pelvic tilt. I wanted to choose exercises that would work on scapular stability or keeping those shoulder blades down and back. I also wanted to choose vertical pull exercises that would strengthen those lats, rhomboids, upper back muscles, lower back muscles, everything. And I also wanted to choose some exercises that would work on grip strength. You know, a lot of people forget about that. Maybe you can do the pull up motion, but your hand grip is so weak that it's just hard for you to hold on longer than 10 seconds. So we've got to also build up the muscles and the hands, right? So this list of exercises that I've prepared for you, I hope that you will screenshot it or type it out, print it out and use this often because for the next several weeks or several months, if you've never been able to do a pull up, I want you to incorporate these into your workouts at least twice a week. All right. If you work out four to five days a week, then at least twice a week, include some of these exercises into your workout routine so that you will have a better chance of being able to do your first your first, bleh, your first pull up very soon. All right, I've typed it out for you guys so it's really easy for you to screenshot if you want. Here is the list of exercise ideas to prepare for your first pull up. Number one, doing a posterior pelvic tilt while in tabletop. This will improve your core strength. Number two, doing a hollow body hold with the arms down at your side. This will also improve your core strength. And you can eventually progress this one to have the arms overhead, making it even more functional for the pull up. Next is the standing overhead dowel rod scapular movement, going through elevation and depression of the shoulder blades to really work on that control of the scapula. Next is a scapular pull-up. You're hanging in that pull-up position, but you're not actually doing the pull-up. You're just focusing on the scapula, being able to go from elevation to depression with the arms overhead now. Just like you practiced with that dowel rod before, now hanging from the bar. Next is dead hangs. This is a great exercise simply to work on grip strength endurance. Just hanging out, keeping the hands gripped to the bar without losing grip, without sliding to the fingertips, and holding as long as you can and building up that duration and endurance over time. Moving into some more lat strengthening exercises, we have some dumbbell pullovers. Fantastic exercise working in that lengthened overhead range with the arms to strengthen the lats. Another great one is the cable bar lat pull down in which you're strengthening the lats going from full shoulder flexion to full shoulder extension. Any sort of lat pull down variation is a great idea working with various grips like the underhand, overhand, mixed grip, wide grip, neutral grip, whatever you need to is great to build the lats. Doing some inverted rows, these are more of a horizontal pull. So they are actually going to strengthen more of the upper back muscles like the rhomboids and the traps. But I do feel it's important to work on these because they're great for building up grip strength. They're a great progression to start off with the body a little more horizontal so it's a little bit easier before you progress to the body being in a very vertical position for the pull-ups. So it's a very similar exercise, but yes, it is going to target more of the upper back. Then one of my absolute favorite exercises is a negative chin up or pull up. A negative is where you are going to jump up to the bar and you're going to start in that position above the bar and then all you're going to actively work on is slowly lowering down. So it's a jump and then lower down slowly over the course of three, four, five, six seconds, even slower if you want. Slowing it down more and more over time to really work on that control. From there, you could do assisted pull-ups using a band or even the pull-up machine where it has some weight on there assisting you. Try it out with various grips and really focus on different timing with those. Since you're getting some assistance from the machine or the band, maybe focus on an eccentric by pulling up and then slowly lowering down still. So there's your list of my top exercises I recommend you do to get to your first pull up. Now for all of these exercises, remember you can start basic with them, start with the basic form of them, and eventually you can add in some more advanced lifting techniques, like using an increased range of motion, 
Increasing time under tension so the muscle is under tension longer by slowing things down. You're going to add an eccentric in by going into a three to four second lengthening phase. You could add a pause in, like pausing for two to 10 seconds. Those are all ways to advance any exercise, no matter your beginner, intermediate, or advanced lifter. But especially with that list of exercises I just shared, you can start basic and eventually sprinkle in some of those advanced techniques to just make them even more challenging until you can build up to that pull up. So here's the thing, you guys know I'm a PT, certified strength coach. I didn't wanna just leave you hanging. Get it? Hanging. I didn't want to leave you hanging without actually giving you a free workout. A workout written by me, really focused on proper workout order, making it very effective, getting a good mix of exercises in with various tempos, getting um, a good variety in that's going to focus on building up your pull-up strength. So I have written what I believe to be the perfect workouts for those of you who are new or still beginners at doing pull-ups. Even someone more intermediate like me who can do many pull-ups, this is still a great workout to do, okay? But especially if you're a newbie, beginner, still working on your first few pull-ups, this is going to be a great workout to add in. Once again, I've typed this out for you guys so it's very easy to screenshot and save, but I would recommend starting with some bodyweight pull-ups, doing three sets of as many reps as you can. If you can't do a pull-up yet, I would recommend you go back to that previous list and work on those things first, or you could sub this out for an assisted version of a pull-up using a band or a machine. Next, I recommend working on some negative pull-ups. Even if you can do pull-ups on your own now, doing the negatives is still fantastic to get better at them. So I would recommend you do three sets of three of negative pull-ups. This time, maybe even try chin-up grip so you can have some variety. But this is the one where you're jumping up and then you're slowly lowering down. And make it slower and slower each week. Then I would move into some TRX or Smith Machine inverted rows in which your body is in a little bit more of a horizontal plane. For this one, you're going to have the legs bent or straight. Then try some eccentric dumbbell pullovers. This is going to be where you're slowly lowering it down. So start with the dumbbell to the ceiling and then over the course of three to four seconds, slowly bring it overhead, getting a really great stretch in the lats, full range of motion, and then bring it back up to the ceiling in one second. Next up, some chest supported dumbbell rows. So once again, this is a horizontal pull motion, but still fantastic for building up scapular stability. You have to retract the scapula against gravity in this position, so it's a really great exercise working against gravity with some weight. Next up, we can move to the cables for a bar pull down and even a one arm pull in, both of which we're now just working on a little bit easier exercises here and also some unilateral work to work out any imbalances. So if you notice that your right arm is stronger than your left, then maybe do some extra reps on the left arm to improve balance from side to side. All right, you guys, I hope that you found today's video helpful. Remember, if you wanna work on getting your first pull up or even just progressing pull ups, add these things in two to three days per week for several months and hopefully it will get you to be able to do that pull-up. And even once you've got your first few pull-ups, still keep dreaming, still keep challenging yourself. Dream about doing weighted pull-ups, eccentric, accentuated pull-ups, and even pull-ups with different fun grip variations. It's all possible if you dream, believe in yourself, and put in the hard work. Pull-ups just take a lot of practice, you guys, so practice them on a regular basis if you wanna get better at them. Also, if you are able to do your first pull-up or chin-up after following this program that I just shared, I would love to hear from you. Seriously, please comment below or film the video of you doing your pull-up and tag me on Instagram at Steph Dorworth because I want to celebrate with you. This is like a huge win. I still remember being able to do my first pull-up. I was at the gym with my husband. He was like cheering me on like, you can do it, Steph. And I had failed many times before, but I was like, you know what? I'm just going to try. And I tried and I did it and I just felt so empowered as a woman to be able able to do a pull-up and from then I've just been addicted to them since then and it's just amazing to be able to walk in the gym to the pull-up bar and do more pull-ups than even some of the guys next to me I love it so I would love to hear your wins and celebrate with you please share with me if you're able to get your pull-ups after following this
All right, so that is it for today. Stay tuned. Next week, we have a Get Paid episode all about freelancing coming up. Also, if you haven't yet subscribed to my channel, please do. I'm going to teach you guys how to get fit and feel strong and empowered and also how to get paid doing a job and work that you love from home. So subscribe, subscribe. I absolutely love all of you guys and appreciate you being here and following along with this journey. All right, that's it for today. As always, peace and love. Bye.